Pope Pius XII's pontificate, which lasted from 1939 to 1958, coincided with the Second World War, one of the darkest periods of the 20th century. Though praised by many for his efforts during the war, he has been at the center of intense debate for over 50 years, surrounding his perceived silence when it came to helping the Jews of Europe and in condemning Nazi atrocities. But is this true? Who is the real Eugenio Pacelli? What was his role during World War II, and how do we separate fact from fiction? I have decided that the opening of the Vatican archives of the pontificate of Pius XII will take place on March 2, 2020. The Holy Father's decision to open the archives of Pius XII generated a great deal of excitement and anticipation by scholars across the world. This has, in turn, ushered in a new period of scholarship, as well as brought up old narratives surrounding the Pope's perceived silence. After more than three years since the archives were opened, we may finally have some answers. One man who knows this material better than anyone is Dr. Johann Ix, director of the Vatican's historical archives of the Section for Relations with States of the Secretariat of State. In 2021, he published his book, Pio XII El Ebrei, Pius XII and the Jews, after going through more than 800,000 documents. One series of particular interest to Ix was the recently uncovered Jewish files. The Ebrei files that at, in the historical archives of the Secretary of State represent a series, an archival series, which is very strange because normally our series are all called to nations with which we have uh, regular bilateral um, agreements and bilateral activi diplomatic activity. Now, with the Jews, we didn't have them. All of a sudden, in 39, comes out a series till 45, 6. Now, um, this series was not known, and uh, it are thousands of letters that were sent from the whole of Europe to the Pope, to the Pope himself, uh, to get help. And, you know, to get uh, sustained in some way, be it in by money, by uh, passports or whatever, to get away out of Europe uh, and, you know, uh, under, uh, let's say, the threat of Nazism. And when looking at these letters, why was this, say, unprecedented? Because as you noticed, between the say bilateral relations between the Holy See and other states, was this a, diff a change in conception? No, it was not known. It was not known. And by many scholars before, they said that you know Pius XII was not doing anything. He was just looking away. There was under his very windows was you know going on a uh, let's say a, a mistreating of, of of Jews, and he didn't do anything. Now this is not true because if you see what he did, he constituted in the Secretary of State not one office, but two offices, because there were two sections. Let's say the general affairs of the church, which is the other section, and the section where I'm working on uh, is of the archives I'm working on, are of the um, archives of the foreign affairs, if I can say it like that. Now, foreign affairs had also a bureau uh, specifically for helping Jews day and night. So these letters came in, and this office was dealing daily and night and day and night to help those Jews where they could because it was very very difficult. Since the opening of the archives and the publication of Dr. X's book, there's been a renewed interest in Pius XII's diplomacy and humanitarian efforts during the war, which could carry significant implications for a renewed evaluation of Pius XII's legacy. Recently, however, there was the revelation of a document claiming that Pius XII knew about the concentration camps as early as 1942, which caused a media firestorm and revived old narratives. So the, this document that's been discussed in the press, actually there is an earlier document from the fall of 1941 that was published by uh, the Vatican itself in 1974. It was the case of a Slovakian priest who gave the first report, and from that time, the Secretariat of State, the Pope, and his officers received regular reports and were among the best informed about the Holocaust, as were the Allied governments, including the United States, including Great Britain, 
I think what we can see now from the archives, it's not a question that Pope Pius XII knew about the suffering of Jews and the murder of Jews in massacres. Now we can see all the different considerations that he had to weigh as the head of a city-state, but also the moral leader of the entire Roman Catholic Church. Currently underway in Rome is a three-day conference where scholars, historians, and theologians are meeting to further discuss their findings and to understand how to better contextualize Pius XII's efforts and diplomacy within the broader context of the time. It's the first international conference where uh, dicasteries of the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican archives, as well as Jewish communities here in Rome and across Italy, have come together to organize an event to try to better understand this history. And it will take many years to really understand the figure of the Pope and the decisions that he faced. There were m many, many uh, Jews that were also in camps already in camps present that were writing to the Pope. It's very, very uh, astonishing. But they did it exactly while their fellow uh, Jews said to them, the, the one who can help you out, the only one who will do it, is the Pope. And that is striking because it's exactly the opposite of that what we hear. The narrative we hear is the, the opposite of that. Understanding Pius XII's efforts to help the Jews of Europe will help also understand the broader arc of papal diplomacy in this period, shedding a new light on the man as well as the church and her role in the world. While more time will be needed to evaluate all of the documents in the archives, there are signs that Pope Pius will be remembered as a pope of goodness, charity, prudential wisdom, and resolve, not of silence and indifference.